open so they can go towards these trades and maybe give Condi that key and crucial lease in. Nope, they're banning that grave. Yeah, getting rid of the graves, but that means Shen goes through, as you said. If they do prioritize that Shen for Xiong, that will mean that a lot of power picks fall on over to WE side, the likes of Lee Sin, which has been huge for Condi in this series. There we and go. it is a Shen priority once again. Remember that OMG still has to be afraid of 957's Kled, which was kind of raining terror in the first two games. And a Shen is a good response to that easier lane to deal with, and you have a better chance of being able to protect your backline when those dives come through. So Shen, proper pickup. WE is going to give it off to them. But now what is their response? Because remember, they had the opportunity of trading either one. Uh -huh. But they denied themselves from both Graves and Shen. Yeah, it turns out it's going to be Ash first for Team WE. Again, prioritizing a huge champion for Mystic. And now Condi taking away World 6's Elise after okay. that performance in game number three. Definitely worth the counter pick here. But that means that Lee Sin falls over to World 6. Yeah, I was wondering if WE would go towards the Lee Sin themselves. But no, it's going to be Elise. So that's a lot of pick immediately in their composition, which could transition very well going forward, knowing that. OMG, they could go towards another uh, hyper carry comp. They could go towards the, another Caitlyn again with the top lane being so strong in the Shen. Wonder what it could be. Think they should take away the Karma immediately, just thinking that. Oh, but that would be a good pickup. Yeah, LeBlanc counter picking it away from Shie. Icon, the Hitman. That's very early and leaves the bottom lane completely vulnerable, but it is locked in. Icon is taking matters into his own hands here. And you got to believe WE picks up Karma here because it is a proper flex pick. It's good into LeBlanc. You can pick it up for the bottom lane. It's going to be a Nautilus instead. Mm -hmm. 957 gets to take that champion in the top lane. That's been huge for him in the regular season. Whenever he's not on the carry, that seems to have been his go to at 11 picks tied with Maokai, who has long since fallen off. So WE, they've got so much pick. You mentioned the Ash, you mentioned the Elise, but now they've got a Nautilus to follow through with it. We still haven't even seen the support. That could be Ben taking Thresh. Yeah, hooks upon hooks upon hooks. So I wonder what OMG is going to be worried about because they're not going to get their first hand on the support pick. That is my immediate worry, that Karma could go over to WE and that could still be a flex. Uh, and, and another worry, of course, is the Thresh, as you mentioned. They already have enough pick in their composition. They can em empower that a little bit more. And it's actually so surprising to see OMG put such low priority on their bottom lane with this pick and ban, going straight for top jungle and mid, and now banning away Shie a little bit more uh, with that Jace ban. SMLZ was instrumental in that last game. He was the tool that OMG moved around the map to take turrets. And WE, very respectful of that. Ban away Varus, ban away Caitlyn. Now we're going down the tier list for 80 carries. What's left? Yeah, there's still Jin, I suppose, Zyra. Zyra's been a big pick for five throughout the split. I wonder what WE, I mean, Karma's still open, which is, I'm still surprised about that. So I wouldn't be, I, 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 I would be surprised about a lot of things, but I want to see what WE look to prioritize in this phase. Mm -hmm. Now looking towards the next one, that's Malzahar banned away from Ben. So it's time for the Ooh. second it pick City? for WE. Just picks on picks on picks, and Lulu's not even in the game. As that is Thresh go. locked in. Ash Thresh for Mystic and Ben. This guy is a terror on the champion. You saw how badly he messed up World 6 in game number one. Uh -huh. Now he's back in the exact same champion. He's got Condi on that Elise to follow through whenever he goes for wards and invades. No way. No, nah, I'm not going to respect that's not it even just yet. What I do know is that WE. Now, this one I have to respect. No, I'm okay. <laughs> WE, uh, the amount of pick potential that they have here is very worrying if you're OMG because that's a lot of everyone can start the fight here. Um, if one hook misses, another one comes through, a cocoon, an ash arrow. If WE ever gains control of the map through one lane or another, uh, then immediately these objectives should be able to just get completely gobbled up because OMG will have a tough time contesting for vision. Yeah, they do a lot of damage, but they're all about flanking, all about coming in from multiple directions at once as Lucian is locked in for SMLZ. Bit of a smile from Five as he gives support Galio a hover, but decides to lock in Nami and OMG pick down the line for themselves. Very comfortable champions for these uh, players, and we know that they can put up good numbers. Karma will fall all the way to the bottom of pick and ban for game number four but still a huge champion for Shie in the mid lane. Yeah, obviously WE doesn't want to, I mean, it's not going to be a flex pick at this point because they know they have the Thresh. So they're going to pick up the Karma anyways, 
because it was always good into the lane up against LeBlanc. So they're just going to pick proper lanes here, which is immediately a level up from last game. Yeah, a level up where they can actually pressure point one lane, and that is going to be mid lane. We'll have to see if they find success as with our compositions loaded, locked and loaded for game number four. Yeah. OMG, they've taken game number three. They're clawing their way back up, but now they need to do it against a huge pick comp from Team WE. Can they pull a rabbit out of a hat two times in a row? Or is WE going to shut them down and show that the rabbit was actually under the table the whole time? Oh, where is that rabbit going? I'm just going to have to. They can't chase it. Yeah. Oh, that is the weakest handshake I've ever seen. I mean, these are massive organizations. The coaches have got to have a little bit of respect for each other after games one through three. So I see what you did. Clever, just, clever pick and ban. That's, that's yeah, all you get. Yeah, I, I want a, a, a deeper ha high, uh, handshake. Mm -hmm. In fact, grasp hold of it. Show them who the alpha is. Yeah, the alpha handshake. You're uh, losing this game. Yeah, Icon. Looking like he's recovered significantly after game one and two. You can see World Six giving him a pep talk. Xiang supporting this as well. As we get into game number four between OMG and Team WE. Number one in group B versus number two in group A. And OMG climbing up from the promotion tournament six months ago. They were a single game away from being eliminated. They went to five games, ending up sixth place in the group stage. And now six months later, they find themselves climbing up once again, but against the best team in Group A, making a run for playoffs, making a run for the crown, the grand finals in Nanjing, China. Yeah, this is going to be a tough one for OMG. WE has made a stake for themselves. I remember that bet I made long ago. WE, best team in LPL. Well, they were able to take RNG even, even if it wasn't full power. So WE has always just been that team yeah. throughout the regular season that you have to strive to be able to topple, yes. to take down. WE has been the most consistent team yeah. in the LPL, almost always putting up excellent results. And when we see them really trying, really putting in 110%, it is something to be feared, as we saw in game number one and game number two. Even in game number three, despite being taken off guard as the crowd chants for the two teams. Massive shout out for both of them. Now this is going to be pretty key. I wonder, like, because of course they have a lot of pick. So sending in Thresh, maybe even Cocoon on the lease, but you never want to start Cocoon. That'd just be awful. If oh, looking to SMLZ. go for an evade, rotate around onto SMLZ, and they've caught him. Five members. He flashes. Dashes away, Ben Flash. Got him! Pulls him back in. Hook, line, and sinker. This man is going down. Key pickup here. Level one obviously was going to be a, pick, a big point for WB because of how much pick potential they had. Really good from Ben. To, he, he recognized he was going to get that pick because the new Flash was gone. The dash on SMLZ was already been used, and he's in a very... Uh, controlled point in that jungle. So mm -hmm. that, that was going to hit. He started out with Cook. A small price to pay for a big gold game. But that is now red buff for both Kandi and World 6 as they look to engage in some vertical jungling, swapping their sides of the jungle. And already we can see some Ooh. punishment as a great hook lands on the five, just trying to get that Nami low Forced her to burn through her mana very early on as she will be able to sustain as this lane drags on. And yeah, there we can see Condi. Doesn't even take, oh, he does actually finish off the Raptor camp before heading into the jungle, his own side of the jungle. And World 6 looks to do the same on the other side, but Ben and Mystic are just trying to run the lane here. What's good to see here, it's immediately from the mid lane. Now, Karma was channeling him back. Remember, she has a kill now. She has a kill just based off that level one. She's trying to find a key point where she can get a back advantage to get a second orange ring and maybe a few more potions. That is really bad for Icon because this lane was already difficult enough. So now he's going up against a poor matchup with a kill on Shea already well enough ahead. If I'm Condi, give this person some space so they can get that item lead back in the lane. It'll be a tough road for Icon. Certainly will. Again, you can see Mystic and Ben saying, hey, you guys camped this bottom lane. Sorry, but now we're going to do the same thing to you. It seems like for every time OMG have thrown a punch, WE have answered back with a punch of their own. Yeah. 
And this is going to be definitely, it's a, it's a lot different than the last game because the push advantage is in WE's favor in the bottom lane. It's in the, their favor in the mid lane. Condi is now pressing up into the jungle, gets a, a bit of a, a, a shallow ward in because he's going in alone. So World 6 has to watch out because A, if he gets caught out in his vision, then immediately Condi will have a proper decision into going to the bottom side of the map. There's a lot of pick potential here yeah. in WE. Big Bubble lands on the Mystic. Oh. There's the hook and the lantern behind it. Condi gets in. Can he land the cocoon? And oh. Thunderlords is not enough. Even with red buff burning down, five single digit health is allowed to live, but only just. And it was just because of the fact that he popped that potion that he survived. Here they go. They've got the Elise once again. Condi. Trying to get some damage onto the turret. World 6 is waiting just behind them. He's pretty far away. If they go in, now they spot him out. The bubble catches Ben, taking just a little bit of damage. As World 6 will get some more trade on the back. He finds Mystic, burning him down. That's Flash. No oh. heal either. And Teleport is even being used by uh, Icon to join up with his team. It's completed, whereas Shia, he got his back. That's a very early Divine Chalice and return towards mid. So this is going to be great for CA, the fact that LeBlanc got absolutely nothing in this bottom lane. He's going to be able to come and get that shove back mid in an item advantage that he has. So Icon can't use that time. He's already back, but that means it gives a lot of time and experience for Shea to push out this wave. So at the very least, OMG stopped the pressure coming forward from WE, but at a high price. Absolutely very high cost, but they do stop that pressure. Force the recall out of Mystic. You can see the cull first, so he's going to go for the long laning phase. Icon in the mid lane, you can see down a single minion wave as he makes his way back with an Amp Tome and a Doran's Ring. Luckily, Cannon will mean that he doesn't miss too much, and Ben, with his own early recall, is going to follow Condi into the jungle of World 6 to look for a bunch of vision to keep an eye on that Lee Sin. This is what we've seen from WE's jungle support synergy time and time again in the regular season. I would say the best in the LPL, where they move with each other so often. And it's a Thresh too, so being able to take control of the movement between mid and bottom lane makes it much harder for Icon to really start to roam outwards when he doesn't even know where the vision is. He doesn't know where uh, Elise is or Ben. Ben's hit. He could be anywhere at this point in time. With that very terrifying knowledge, you can see very safe setup as Ben and Condi they didn't see him. sneak around the vision. They're on the other side of that ward as they creep forward. Now they've finally been spotted. Five is trying to escort SMLZ back. He still has no flash. Lantern, bubble catches five. He's tanking turret aggro, teleport as well. But this dive is started and canceled. Chie will try to use his teleport, but will not succeed. Yeah, we got flashes here from WE to see if they can get over that bubble and get a kick off of SMLZ. It's very difficult because, of course, he is on that Lucian. They all miss. If it had hit, then they would have turned into an immediate dive. Thankfully, of course, OMG is safe. Mm -hmm. And that's just TP off of CA. And that's how aggressive W are playing this bottom lane. Almost an exact mirror of what we saw in game number one, but out of OMG. And we're seeing 957 put pressure onto Xiang. He's finally level six, so he's got Stan United. And this bottom tier one turret is chunked down to about a third of its health, and they continually slowly whittle down away. The next few waves, it will lose that fortification. It'll lose that extra defensive bonus. So OMG try to make a play across the mid lane. Stan United, both chains miss. As teleport is started and canceled by 957, they try to make a play and it does not succeed. So that's TP down from every single member on the map and everyone's resetting. So 957 is going to be a little happier about that. He canceled his TP. Meanwhile, you can't do that with Xiang, uh, Shen ulti. So he's going to give an immediate push. I wonder what he's going to do with that because he could just move into the enemy jungle and look to pick up one ward. He doesn't have a trinket, so he's, that's why he's just sitting in the lane. Yeah, Condi is going to clear out red buff on the invade right now. Again, supported by that super aggressive bottom lane, by the presence that he's got from Shia in the mid lane, who's now a full level ahead of Icon because of that experience advantage. They show up bottom and are spotted oh, as the him. ward expires. There's a lantern. Condi gets pulled up. SMLZ has flashed, they got but him. still caught by the hook. They've got so much crowd control, and they managed to kill him. They've even brought Shia down there. Now this tier one turret is finally... Uh, that expiration date is coming up. Yeah. If at first you don't succeed, my friends, you keep trying. And WE just unrelenting. They keep bringing in members, of course. They keep clearing out wards near this. So SMLZ at some point was going to die. Now two deaths to his name. The level one ended this exact moment. Yeah, though they will decide to back away instead. Condi goes back to his jungle, and that's a recall out of Mystic. So the turret is still alive, but the expiration date is still very close, depending on time. With that recall, 
We now see Vamp Scepter out of Mystic as he makes his way back. Another recall from 957 is the finish Specter's Cowl. And it's so excellent to see WE come here into game number four, playing so brutally against OMG. They are not taking any chances in this series. They have a two game advantage, two to one in this series. But now they are just going so hard that this, this is what we want to see from them. Yeah, and you can see what the change was immediately just based off pick ban alone that they have immediately pushing lanes and mid lanes a lot easier for CA. Uh, so that was a major change from them. We see time and time again where WE just gets that one game in the series. We're like, we're gonna we're gonna test this one out. Now finally, it looks like they're in prime position to push the elite forward. SMLZ did bring Warlords. I didn't mention that earlier on. He has Warlords on top of the extra life steal, so he's just trying to survive the poke that he's constantly been getting, having to deal with. Now it's making it a lot harder because of the death that he's been constantly being put. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Finding himself in. It's not. Really, it's not really working out. And even the vision from WM on the bottom side of the map, they continue to prioritize it time and time again. 957 is pulled down towards mid. He'll be spotted out by a control word if he goes any deeper. But Icon playing nice and safe on that huge LeBlanc carry, matching the CS of Shie despite being at a kill deficit. Sonic Wave from World 6. Oh. They think they're the ones setting it, but now Icon sees Kandi, tags him with the snare, and is going to trade jungler for jungler. Now Shie trades it over. There's no follow-up from anywhere else. Xiong has got Stan United, but both top laners have Teleport. Icon trying to match the damage of this Athens on Karma. Oh, the yeah. auto attack follows through, and Icon, <laughs> with seven health, survives. Yeah, Deathfire touch was And the arrow misses. No but he remains alive, just popping the potion himself. So, yeah, you saw what the play was happening. Jungler for jungler, trade. Uh, CA is a much, more, uh, much stronger than Icon at this point, able to output much more consistent damage. So he was close to getting that kill, and it was close to being a two for one. But it's just a trade. It's not going to be too bad for OMG. Now bottom, you can see with the Bilgewater Cutlass finally finished for SMLZ. He feels a little bit better trading into Mystic with that Vamp Scepter. But Condi, man, this guy is living bottom. World 6, though, is making his way down there. Lee Sin versus Elise. Ooh, There's the Lantern. Dark Passage is going to get Condi in there. Sonic Wave is owned away. That's a lot of teleports. GA shows up first. They're managing to get Icon, and it is a full 5v5 in the bottom lane. Knockup is a massive as SMLZ is still alive. Walking out in the back, Icon split from his team, gets pulled in. Finally, he will die as if Mystic and Icon give their lives. Flash from Xion. Oh, they got Cocoon him. to follow it up. They've got so much damage. They've got so much crowd control. They play him back in once again. It's two for one in the extended fight. That was really close, and World 6 was very close to being able to get a kick for himself, but got immediately cocooned, stunned down, along with the Shen ulti on top of him. So WE, it could have been much worse for them, but they back away, they disengage and re-engage on the fight, and yeah. get the tower on top of it. It's, this is a massive advantage now that that first tier 1 has been taken. Tragically, none of the golds on Mystic, but WE are still showing up strong. Here's that extended engage. Yeah, Mystic didn't have ulti because he used it a little earlier on. Condi was in a real worrying position. He knew the bubble was coming, he couldn't avoid it, oh. so he put out the cocoon and World 6 felt a little bit of the pain. The only worry was that Icon was fairly low, put himself in a, a, a proper position. SMLZ and Lee Sin were able to just get out of their scot free, but they still found more picks going forward. They got LeBlanc and they were able to get it on uh, Xiong as well. Flash cocoon to catch up to Xiong. And that was a massive play from Condi, landing the cocoon onto World 6 as he was looking to insect Condi into the yeah. fight. Well reading that play in advance. Good sidestep, but a lot of the damage has been chunked out onto Condi. He's brought down to half by that LeBlanc. She's finished her gunblade, and is excuse me, the revolver, and is starting to do some damage here. Now she's trying to be a little cheeky there. Yeah, she does have to watch out. He's just dodging left, right, trying to keep three members occupied. He's got some support from five, but it takes more than just Icon to win the game. They're down two to five, 4,000 gold. And with the lane swap from Mystic matched by SMLZ, you know that WE will continue to press these turrets advantage. Play the same game OMG played in game number three against them. Oh, but WE, they sniffing blood here. Oh, they don't see him. Yeah, he's just outside of it. Oh, they but they know that he's there. The arrow tags him. They're getting damage over the wall, but he hops over. So blue buff catches him. And that, uh, excuse me, blue buff is picked up by WE as the arrow catches World 6, but 
they continue to return towards those lanes. SMLZ is so much closer to his Blade of the Ruin King to holding on to that top tier one and defending. And just take a look at the vision from WE on this side of the map. Yeah, the reason it was all there is because OMG were back at base. They reset a lot of control while Icon was in mid looking to just fend them all off. That means that that's a lot of control wards linked between mid lane and top lane. Mystic doesn't have ulti yet. But once he does have Enchanted Crystal Arrow, and plus, even if he doesn't, that's a lot of pick potential for just about everybody on the team. So they can get an engage off. It doesn't have to be off of Ash. So Icon, it's a difficult time for him because he needs to actually be able to leave this lane. But he's having a tough time dealing with Karma. And of course, has no way to be able to confidently move away from that lane with how much control yeah, is that, around. That first blood from Shie was so critical. You can see he's 20 CS up with blue buff, with the Athens on Holy Grail. Let's see if he decides to go for the Ardent Sensor second to empower Mystic, or if he starts transitioning towards a more carry role on that Karma. SMLZ is pushing away forward, being so respectful of Ben, who with his Mobis is such a threat with these hooks. There's no follow-up from the rest of WE, but even so, you can see OMG are playing so defensive, bringing World 6 towards that side of the map. Now they're having an uh, Icon sort of cheat towards that side of the lane as well as he leans over to support them if a skirmish were to break out. Xiong sitting so far back, so close to his turret, so that he could safely stand united if a fight were to break out. Yeah, it's good from OMG just to be able to regain pressure topside, right? Because they know that Enchanted Crystal Arrow was down, and that WE had relieved pressure topside. So they were able to just make it a lot more comfortable for SMLZ, and so he wasn't going to be constantly feeding out. He's already 0-2. He doesn't want to be a 0-3 yeah. at this point in, in the game. And so now it's a little harder for WE to look towards topside. But that is Enchanted Crystal Arrow right back up. Uh, there's all the abilities to be able to go top. That's Karma now moving along with the rest of the team. Yeah, here comes the pick. They've got Teleport available for 957. Condi gets in and drops a lot of vision. SMLZ will clear the rest of it out. But four members of, of OMG are up top. Recall from 957 is being completed. He's got teleport. The arrow misses, but the minion wave has crashed. That's a hook as well. They've still got a lot of poke if they can catch someone. World 6 eats a cocoon as Icon joins the fight, tags the ethereal chain just to scare them away. If we can stick here because SMLZ did get poked out just a little bit by the Karma uh, Q. So right now they're in a tough spot. And that ward that was placed deep into the uh, blue side jungle is a good TP They're ward. continuing to choke out SMLZ with this damage. He's got to clear out the minions, but cannot afford to get close. You can see Xiong sitting back on that stand United, but does not pull the trigger with that. WE will finally finish off the top tier one. Two turrets to zero as Mystic will take that lantern to safety or just leave Ben to his own work as he finishes off the minion wave. Recall means Blade of the Ruined King is finished for SMLZ. And despite the call start from Mystic, he's probably pretty close to finishing off his own Blade of the Ruined King, which is why we see him finishing off that minion wave. Yeah, he should definitely have it now. So he's got a lot of gold in his pocket that he needs to spend. He was able to get that last wave, which should be done deal right there. So that just means that he does get Fly, Fly, uh, Blade of the Rune King on top of the already finished much earlier on uh, attack speed boots, Berserker's Roots. That's the difference between SMLZ and his gold right now. <laughs> finished recurve bow and those berserker greaves versus only the double daggers from smlz now dragon was pinged a few times by we you can see they're moving ash and ben down towards that bottom side of the map as they look for vision they've got a ruby sight stone not to mention the tracker's knife double haunting guys from shie and Condi as they're looking to go big in this game and things are looking a little scary for omg as they find themselves very far behind Icon's getting pushed out by the jungle and support of WE, who are just so mobile. Ben is just thirsty. He's looking for these picks at all times. He, I think he might feel insulted that they lost game number three with how aggressive he's playing. SMLZ now swaps towards the top, which means they're giving up pressure bottom. The minion wave is cleared, and SMLZ will eat a hook. 957 is so tanky, but he doesn't have a lot of armor. And with the Blade of the Rune King, SMLZ is able to answer back. Meanwhile, WE used that knowledge to push down mid. Again, threatening Icon away from his turret so they can break down the third tier one. Chains over the wall as Icon tries once again. He's got a flank from World 6, but there's no damage. Mystic is just around, looming for his ulti itself. He's got someone! Yeah, that's the arrow. Five is the target. Stan United to stall this out, but they've got way too much crowd control. He has died. Xiong dashes away, oh, flashes he's got over it. the wall, but brings the knockup. SMLZ tries to sidestep, but sidesteps into his doom. Flashes back again, but will die to the follow-up from Xie as WE break down three members of OMG. 
disaster for OMG. SMLZ got popped up, and it was Xiang that the ulti was actually on top of. So now WE already going towards this tower. Yeah, matching almost the pace from OMG in game number one as this tier two is broken off of a very successful pick. It's three versus five. Icon will catch Kandi with a Ooh. lot of damage. He pops up and is still alive. Icon does not find the assassination. He wanted it so bad. Yeah, just barely. Just barely. Isn't able to get him. <laughs> you can see how he's hounding Team WE away. He's trying to carry, but here's the arrow. They yeah. catch five. Five was not going to be able to get out of there. He didn't have flash either, and he would put himself in that corridor. He's going to die. Sion getting. This is how much control and how much poke and how much pick is coming off of WE. SMLZ gets knocked up. He's on the. He's the next person to really get poked out because CA was able to get straight through World Six to get the kill. So just one person after the next, after the next. They're just getting chased down due yeah. into part, of course, of Karma's speed boost. But also just because people just, there's just too much CC on this damn team. Yeah, and again, compared to game number three in which OMG ran this aggressive play against WE, WE had the insurance of Kogma and Vladimir. They had time. They had the ability to sit back and scale. SMLZ on Lucian is never going to do that much damage to Kogma. Icon, he's trying to look for these massive outplays, but he is only one man. Cloud Dragon's being picked up by WE, but OMG are just, they, oh no. they're hunting. They're looking. But Mystic feels, the, he feels that pressure. He feels the heat coming from that jungle. Yeah, the hatred from OMG emanating from that side of the map. Plays yeah. it nice and safe, sticks towards the turrets. Too much dark energy in that area. I'm mm -hmm. going to move away. Swaps over towards yeah. mid. World 6 starts his recall. Icon's still giving a few pings. He's not communicating, though. There he goes. Oh, he's sitting for it. They're actually looking for a flank position. They have their sights set on Mystic. Nah, they're yeah. just, all right, they're trolling. They're still thinking about it, but this is a lot of time invested just to kill the 80 carry. Condi shows up to lead the charge. He is not very tanky. They actually spot him clearing that out as they start their own recall. Sweeper, okay. and he sidesteps one. Does he have enough time to sidestep another? The arrow comes out, but the collapse from WE as the play gets turned around. Condi dies, but Icon is knocked up and will die in answer. And now they find Xiong. He stands they united in. He tried to teleport away and is punished for this. It is 10 to 3 for Team WE. And that is the definition of a desperation play. So now WE, they've completely taken down OMG. Baron has just spawned. Mid. They are rushing towards it. And now they're not. No, that is, they don't have a jungle, friend. No, it's not happening. No, at least. They yeah. could try, but it would be very risky with World 6 up. So they're going to cool it down a little bit. Cool the Jets. They turn on to Shie. Oh, Bubble no. is going to miss. He's looking for the outplay. He's going to be knocked up, but dies now as Khan. Excuse me, World 6 follows through and gets that kill. Mystic eating some damage from SMLZ. Fires back onto 5. Doesn't quite have the arrow just yet as Sonic Wave lands. Play is too late. SMLZ gets the kill, and OMG oh, are winning the oh. fight. They're the ones with the jungler up, though he is low health. That's a double kill as the bottom lane and mid laner from WE stagger in one by one by one and die. The moment you count this team out, they were able to come back. Three kills in their favor. Condi is up. And I know he's nicknamed Son of Baron, but this is going to be a hard one for him to steal. OMG trying to get themselves back into the game. World 6 is still tanking this. You've got to let somebody else do it. As Xiong finally joins up with his team, the hook is flashed as 957 is flanking from the far side. Condi is spotted by Icon. The Son of Baron smells blood in the water, but 957 is doing work. Teleport from Xie, and OMG might have bit off too much more than they can chew. Oh, 1900 no. health. World 6 is so low. He goes in, and it's picked up by Word Xiong. The ensuing fight arrow is going to field goal between them, uh -huh. but Xie cleans it up. OMG have got the Baron, and they win the fight despite losing two. They are still in this series. Yeah, they are. They're, they're sure. You know what? They're behind in gold, but that is going to be able to pick it back up. OMG, they were able to take Baron off of it. And it was it was so weird for WE to lose three kills randomly, right? Uh, just yeah. random off of mid. They were trying to help out Xie because he was a little outstretched, a little bit too far forward. And then it was just kill after kill. Someone was trying to save him. The Suns was trying to and uh, save Thresh. It's that massive presence from OMG to be able to recognize Xie is out of position. Yeah. He doesn't have flash because he used it to kill our LeBlanc just a few seconds ago. We've got crowd control. We can her herd him into a corner. And then the rest of the team, as you said, they staggered in one by one by one for easy kills. And OMG, every time you count them out, they're able to come back. This team is like game talents gone Super Saiyan. This, oh. this is... Excellent to see OMG sort of grow like this with this focus 
It is so hard to maintain perseverance in a best of five, yet they continue to keep their vision clear. Look for picks, rotate around the map, make sure we kill the priority targets from WE. And though they have been losing objectives, they are still in this game. Yeah, and that's really key to say because getting that Baron, what would that mean for them, right? They can really stop the pressure coming through because they've been losing tower after tower and been completely pushed forward. Now, the, the reason why these kills are just going for WE is because, of course, once that one person gets picked off of like a Thresh Hook, right, or an Ash Arrow, it really does snowball. So OMG, I, they haven't faced a composition like this throughout the entirety of the split. Yeah. And so there'd be times where like, okay, we can double down and look to save this person or look to contest this uh, fight and then back away. Disengage, but the disengage is so hard for them because it's just skill shots flying at them. So yeah. now that they're able to get this Baron that can push forward and maybe they can take a team fight going forward because SMLZ, Lucian, uh, even though mo there are some 80 carries that you can look towards and say that you can carry on uh, just off of the, off your sheer mechanics alone. Uh -huh. And Lucian is a, a clear pick for him that he can do that. Yeah, well, definitely keep an eye on SMLZ's performance and see if he can pull it together. Obviously, again, in game number three, he was the tool that was rotated around the map by OMG to take turrets, to take that early advantage. He was doing headshots for crazy, and we saw how they were able to play around him. And again, we're seeing Icon playing up. He looks like he might be a little bit shaken by the best of five, but in game, his play more excuse me, more than makes up for how he looks outside of game. He has been trying to harass as much as possible, stall this time so that SMLZ can do damage. And when OMG find the opportunities, they're not hesitating to take it, even though they are sometimes getting a little overzealous. Mm -hmm. For example, World 6 and Icon sitting just outside of vision, looking for Mystic for what, like a good minute, minute and a half? Yeah, but they couldn't really find a, a position or at least a time to kind of pull the trigger. So it's nice to see them make like track those plays yes right that's something that omg has done there they've come back in a lot of cases in the regular season just based off of the fact that they, even though they lose it off of some random play they will always try to get themselves dig themselves back of a fight just off skirmishes off fights alone mm -hmm. uh, so that's nice to see from uh w from that team problem is now going up against we sure you're able to take baron for yourself but that doesn't take away the sheer threat from this team. Yeah. The sheer uh, comeback in terms of the amount of picks they can look for if uh, OMG tried to push forward with the Baron buff that they do have. And the huge burst damage we're seeing as well. I think Shia with his build was going for a Luden's Echo second. Or no, excuse me, he was going for the Leandri's Torment. Then I think he had another needlessly large rod. So he's going straight damage on this Karma. And we've seen what happens when Karma can really start popping off. Um, so looking forward to the rest of this matchup. Uh, OMG, we've seen them come back from a best of five like this again. If they win this game, they go to game number five. Does WE start worrying then? Or I mean, the, you can see yeah. how serious they're taking this game right here. That would be a huge upset if OMG were to even bring it to game five. Yeah, they were probably worried in game three when they were just so far behind against a team that they've defeated 2-0 convincingly in week seven, right? This is not should not be a competition for them. Now, it should be because OMG has demanded respect. They've gotten to a point where they're second place, but WE is trying trying to prove that they're not just in the top three of EDG, RNG, and WE, that they are clear-cut best because only mm -hmm. one team can go from uh, China to Rio and for MSI. Yeah. And again, this would be a massive tragedy for Team WE. They are expected to move on to finals. They are very clearly the favorites in this matchup. And to be s that, that being said, though, WE has never gone to an LPL finals. Yeah. They have never placed higher than third since the LPL. And with that sort of knowledge, they're up against OMG. This is supposed to be the easy side of the bracket. And if they lose, that would be a massive disappointment for fans. It would be. And uh, the players, and maybe they're feeling that pressure a little bit from just the organizational standpoint. Yeah. But the organization, would he, they know how much it means for them. Ever since EDG kind of broke off, not even kind of, they just definitely broke off a yeah. lot of the, pl the prime players. All those years ago. And WE, they've been struggling because there were one point where they were at eighth place. There was They were really on the bottom end of the LPL. And then they finally picked it up. This is like for, I would say, about a year now. They've been improving just time and time again, slowly getting better, building themselves up to a point now where they should be the first place. They should be yeah. second place in this split. As you said, uh, this is the one of the best performances we've seen out of WE in 
very, very long time. Um, the fact that they have this massive lineup, 957, Condi, Shie, they are the most consistent team during the regular season. Of course, like any LPL team, they do have a few moments where they drop games for very confusing reasons. 957 had a bit of a weak performance in Week 9 and Week 10. Condi looked like he was having a bit of uh, uh, difficulty as well. But then you contrast that with when we see him on his Rangar, when he's popping off and single-handedly carrying games. This team should win this best of five. But now we're looking at OMG actually running the gauntlet, actually running this full game out. And WE are time and time from here and there falling short as there appears to be a team fight going on. There's chaos on the screen. Baron has long since fallen off and SMLZ is picking up a kill, but it's currently three versus one with five. 21 to 13, that inhibitor is still up, but WE are chasing forward. They've already taken the middle inhibitor. Ladies and gentlemen, this game could be over right here and right now as they win the fight. WE, we were just setting the story and now you're gonna end it. Mystic and 957 are there. There's not enough time for Icon to get back up. World 6 is almost there as well. Exhaust on the Mystic. Super Minions on the Nexus turrets. They are trying to play it out, but 5 with the hero World defense six is up. buys time for World 6. And now the Nexus itself is bare. But OMG, we come back at one hell of a time. Yeah, I don't know what happened, and I think everybody out there is putting up a few question marks. But I think WE found the respect to that. Yeah. I love, we're probably going to be seeing a replay, but good God, what happened, WE? We just had a smash cut to an apocalypse scenario <laughs> for OMG. I mean, camera pan and look back and everything is on fire. I'll tell you right now, I was looking at those white picket fences. I was like, all right, you know, I can get it behind this dream. And suddenly nuclear warfare. I was yeah. like, oh, oh, I didn't know that we were in this timeline. All right, good job, WE, I guess. Yeah, this is the darkest timeline for Team OMG. SMLZ, you can see he's doing damage. Finished his Quicksilver, has two more items, the Black Cleaver and Phantom Dancer. But running through the stock of the other items, it's matched on the other side by Mystic. He's ahead by a BF Sword. Both of the AP carries are absolutely massive, all the tanks oh. are as well. And World 6, thank goodness you've got a Banshees, but you're going to have to get away from Ben, who's leading the charge. Oh, no. And the arrow tags him. He's got no flash. There's Cocoon. Icon gets in front to try to save his jungler, but World 6 is dead. Baron is on the map, and it's five versus is four. Yeah, five versus four, and that inhib is already down, but they're marching down this lane. Inhibs are down. Nexus turrets are down. The answer marching one by one, and WE are leading the charge. Xiong tries to stall it out, buying time for SMLZ. He's trying to kill 957, but does no damage to him. Ben eats a big hit. The SMLZ is firing across, but gets played back. His tank line is gone. His SMLZ support down. is gone. His jungler is gone. His chances are trying to slowly dwindling. Mystic is firing onto Xiong. It's all up to Icon. It's do They've or die, it. and it turns out it's die. WE turn on to the Nexus. They win game number four and advance to the grand finals in Nanjing, China. Now that was kind of a fast forward re on that one, uh, but it looks like WE is heading to Nanjing. Good For God. a team that has never made it to the LPL Finals, WE have finally done it in game number four over Team OMG. And you can see with a heavy sigh, OMG stand up and shake the hands of their opponents in a very long and very well-fought series. But WE come out victorious and they will be advancing, finally able to break the stigma, to break the curse. And just take a look at them finally bowing in front of their fans. Quite a lot of them out there. They're going to be see all of those fans are going to be having a sigh of relief. They've been celebrating. Yeah. You can see the audience is so happy that WE is finally moving on. And OMG, they will be playing tomorrow in the third, fourth place match. So this isn't the last that we've seen of them just yet. But WE get to breathe a sigh of relief. They've got a week to prepare for their next best of five. Yeah, but they can just sit down, relax, and watch the next set that's going to be coming up very soon. ADG versus RNG. Yes, that's going to be super hyped to take a look at who they are going to play against. But for now, they get a chance to breathe and relish the victory that they finally accomplished for themselves. Closing out the series three to one, it was looking a little dire halfway through that game when we saw OMG take that Baron after winning a successful team fight. I thought for a moment, OMG might have been ready to start running the gauntlet and just pushing it back out to game five, but WE, they pull through. Yeah, OMG have conditioned us at this point to just believe in the run back. Look at that dip. That dip was pretty big. OMG, that was the moment they were able to attain the Baron but it didn't turn too much. And so that was just an adaptation W was able to make in the uh, in the draft phase. 
and they just didn't allow our OMG time mm -hmm. in the lanes to actually breathe. Yeah, and with that sort of pressure, they opened up such a massive advantage that they were able to break down that middle inhibitor. You can see Mystic, once again, huge performer for his team. 36.6 thousand damage in a 30-minute game. Absolutely huge AD carry. And WE finally advanced towards the finals. They are able to pull through. You can see SMLZ and Icon certainly tried their hardest, but they just could not finish out the series. They could not turn around the momentum that WE had in the beginning of that game number four. Yeah, it was too much of an obstacle for uh, OMG. They had a good comeback in game three, but e well, just in the series. But that was a great game three from the, from the early game going forward. They still had a very rough time once the late game hit through and the Kog'Ma yeah. and Vladimir started to actually do a lot of damage. But WE just said, why are we even giving them the chance of the early game? Why are we giving them that strength? They went into the, they went back, had a discussion about it, and immediately the draft phase uh, improved drastically. Yeah, and it's so exciting to see WE play these different styles. They are willing to sit back and turtle, but then in the next game, they are willing to immediately pick the aggressive pick composition and aggressively camp bottom lane. Like, yep. they brought the whole fan damnly down there. Yeah, I'll tell you right now, no one should be happy about sitting down and turtling. That is one thing I want to change <laughs> about WE. Don't pick those compositions. That is not good. Better teams will punish you, but yeah. that's the question, as now they're uh, one of the top two teams in China. What better teams are left to challenge them? Of course, we'll find out in that next best of five, but the MVP for this game goes over to Xie. You can see 96% kill participation. He missed a single kill for his team. That was incredibly in in uh, influential in this set. He was able to hold down Icon, who was definitely the back one. He was on that, uh, he was on that LeBlanc. Mm -hmm. And the problem with LeBlanc in this case, and for him in the lane, he, he definitely had a tough time because he did come back to a chalice uh, early on yeah. on the uh, Karma. So there was a tough time for him just because of the level one kill going in, his, in the Karma's favor. So Xie had that advantage. He pushed that advantage. There was no time in which LeBlanc had uh, up and available to roam outwards. And so that was just how it, was, how it turned out to be. There was actually yeah. a play in the later portions of team fights where he was able to weave cues into getting the kill on SMLZ. Yeah. So really well played from him. We saw an excellent setup from Xie over the course of this series. And again, we're seeing OMG, uh, excuse me, WE play around these different strengths. They know they have a huge carry in Condi if he decides to go for it. But then he's also taking a ganking role with 957. We've seen how Mystic can take this late game hyper carry, AD carry role to the absolute max. And now Xie, as you said, putting out massive damage in these team fights, supporting his team so that they can pop off as well. Plus, we know he's a hell of an assassin, too. Yeah, so I really like the flexibility this, team's has, this team has, mostly in 957. I think 957, mm -hmm. he was able to showcase the uh, Kled really early on. And then from that point forward, he can easily also go towards the Gragas and come in with those massive flank plays. He'd been doing it constantly throughout this series and gave Xiang a really tough time. It's usually Xiang that's able to impact these team fights positively if they were able to go up against most teams, that his flanks would be incredibly impactful, that he can come up and save SMLZ in t uh, key moments. But if, yeah, 957 didn't give him that opportunity. Yeah, I feel like 957 barely gave Xiong time of day in this series. Yeah. Like the Kled in game number number one and game number two was huge. And in game number three, just taking a look, uh, that was the Gragas played into the Shen. And mm -hmm. he managed to get some massive casks with Condi. So this is the weak points that we saw from Team WE during weeks nine and ten. It was Condi and 957 not stepping up. Yeah. But they have shown that they have identified that weakness. They have cleaned it right on up and... If we continue to see WE play like this, they could certainly be a real challenge for whoever wins the next semifinal game. Yeah, they only need a one best of five, right? That's exactly. all it takes right now is to go into that one best of five, and they will know who they're going up against very soon with EDG and RNG. And that being said, they are one best of five from going to Rio de Janeiro yep. for MSI. And you've got to imagine that's a pretty big prestigious award as well. Yeah, th there was one time where WE was able to go out internationally. Now they were eighth place team. They somehow went to the finals. Don't know how that happened. Yeah. <laughs> that was up against TSM. The, the and I, yeah. ancient legacy could be rearing its head for Team WE. Again, like you said, this team is years old with That's a true. huge structure behind them. Massive fan base. One of the biggest, if not the biggest, in all of China. Yeah. And yet they have never gone to the LPL finals. They have not gone international in years. Yeah. Yet they have finally done it here. There was IEM and, of course, way, way before IPL5 and all that. It looks like we might see WE coming back out once again. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, so time will tell. 
Bell. They'll be playing next week in Nanjing, China. Of course, though, we've got our next best of five to determine who their opponents will be joining them in the Nanjing Sports Arena Olympic Gymnasium. It's EDG taking on Team RNG in just a few. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.